we're going to build a website archive that uses GitHub Actions to automatically take a screenshot with Playwright, upload it to Cloudinary to create a nice static web archive app in Astro. Hey team, I'm Colby Fayok. I make weekly tutorials helping you to solve real problems with the tools of the web. If you've ever used the Wayback Machine from the web archive, it's an amazing tool to be able to find past versions of a website as a snapshot in history complete with all the actual HTML that was delivered on the page, including all of its images. Now, while we're not going to actually take a snapshot of the HTML, what we'll do is take a screenshot using Playwright so we can have our small screenshot of history, seeing how our website or maybe how another website changed over time. So getting started, the first thing that we'll need in order to actually display anything on a page is the data. Inside of my Astro project, I just created some components and a little layout just to get the UI going, but really all it's doing is dumping some content on the page. And what we'll be doing is placing the images eventually inside of this grid that I have already set up on the page. If you wanna follow along, you can find a link to the starter in the description. But I'm gonna actually collapse that and I'm gonna create a new directory. I'm gonna call that scripts, where inside I'm gonna create a new file called archive.js. Where here, this is we're gonna run the code to actually grab the information about the website. Where each time I run this, I wanna create a few data points, including a URL, which I'm gonna set that to spacejelly.dev. I wanna create a new date. I'm gonna set that to new date, date now. And I'm ultimately going to create a new archive content where inside I'm gonna have that URL and a date. Now on top of that, I'm gonna want an image, but what we're gonna do is use Playwright in order to grab that image from the website. And then we're gonna upload that to Cloudinary so that we actually have a stored URL that we can use to show on the page. So starting off, we're gonna need Playwright. And while Playwright is really great for testing, it's also great for being able to automate other things inside of a browser. So inside of my terminal, I'm gonna run npm install Playwright, save dev. And at the top of my file, I'm going to import Chromium specifically from Playwright, or you can alternatively import Firefox or whatever browser Playwright supports. And with that imported, the first thing I need to do is create new constant of browser. I'm going to set that equal to chromium.launch, where I need to actually await this asynchronous command, where with my browser, I can create a new constant of page and I can say await browser.new page. And then finally, I can say await oh, page go to, and I'm going to pass in that URL of spacejelly.dev. Now, before I do anything else, we always want to make sure that when we're running this, we close our browser session. So I'm going to run await oh, browser.close, but then in between our go to and our close, I can start to take that screenshot. So I'm going to say await oh, page screenshot, where I'm going to pass in a path, and this can really be wherever we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory. And I'm going to call that screenshots and then we can make it. So this path is going to be sent to screenshots slash whatever we want to do. Maybe we can use the new date or the date that we're creating in here dynamically so that we can actually use a timestamp for the file name. So I'm going to say date to ISO string, and then I'm going to add a dot PNG at the end. I'm also going to say that I want to make sure it takes the full page. So I'm going to say full page true. And at this point, we can head over to our terminal and actually try to run this and see what happens. So I'm going to run node scripts archive.js. And then we can have a peek over inside of our screenshot folder where if I look at it, I now have my new screenshot. Now that we have that image inside of our file system, we could probably technically store that in Git, but because we're probably gonna have a lot of different images, we probably wanna store that in somewhere external as it's a little bit easier to manage. And then we get a, little of, a lot of other benefits such as optimization or other transformations to enhance the experience. So to do that, we're gonna use the Cloudinary Node SDK to upload that to a Cloudinary account. Back inside of my terminal, I'm gonna run npm install Cloudinary. At the top of my file, I'm going to import version v2 as Cloudinary from Cloudinary. I'm then going to set up my configuration. So I'm going to run cloudinary.config, where inside I'm going to pass in my cloud underscore name, my API underscore key, and my API secret. Now, I don't want to actually store these values right inside of my file here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add environment variables for all these. So we're gonna need our Cloudinary Cloud name, our API key, and our API secret. And now we wanna actually be able to store this in our environment variable file. So I'm gonna create a new file at the root called .env. And then inside, I'm gonna set up a new variable for each and every one of these, where now we can go get our values for each of these. We're right inside of my Cloudinary dashboard. I can find that cloud name, API key, and secret, where let's first start copying those over with the cloud name, and I'll paste that in. And similarly with my API key and my API secret. Now, just as a reminder, make sure to never share this secret value. Don't commit it into Git as it could compromise your account. 
Now, by default, since we're running this in Node outside of the Astro lifecycle, this file is not going to have any idea as to where to grab these environment variables. So we have to tell them where to find that, and we can use that using .env. .env is a tool that probably a lot of projects actually use under the hood, but we can use this if we're creating files or building our own scripts in order to load the environment variables. So I'm going to run npm install.env, and we're going to call that save dev. And back inside of our file, I'm going to import everything as .env from our .env package. Then underneath the imports, I'm going to say .env config. So now our process.env should be available and we should be able to see all of our API keys, our secret and our cloud name. But now we need to upload that image to our Cloudinary account. So to start off, I'm going to pull out this directory path and I'm going to set that as constant screenshot path. That way we don't have to write out that same thing again. I'm going to set that as that path value. But now I'm going to say constant results is equal to await Cloudinary oops, spelled that wrong, cloudinary.uploader.upload, and I'm going to simply pass in that screenshot path. Now, it probably doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to remove or remove the results to under where we're closing the browser. But now I'm going to head back over to my terminal, and I'm going to run that script again, where once it completes, we should be able to see our new results, including the public ID, all the information about that, including a URL and a secure URL, which if we open that up inside of our browser, we can now see our new screenshot. So we're going to use that secure URL and the width and the height in order to add that information to our image. So let's say inside of the image, we're going to add a URL where it's going to be our results.secure URL. We're going to add a width of results.width and a height of results.height. And just to reassure ourselves, let's actually log out this archive to see what this looks like. And if we run it again, we see this perfect object where we have our URL, our date, and that image that we just uploaded. So now we want to store this archive data inside of our file system. So this gets saved into Git every time that this is ran. GitHub Actions is going to run the script and then save that file. And then inside of Astro, we're going to pull all that data. So to do this, we're going to use the Node.fs or file system package, which is baked into the Node environment. Now, even though our script is separate from our application environment, it should be worth pointing out that we're writing the script in Node and Astro tries to not be environment specific so that it can support a variety of different environments in addition to Node. This won't really matter too much for the Node specific purposes of our script, but later when we try to pull in this data, we'll notice that we're using different imports to get FS or FS like capabilities. But for now, I'm going to import promises as FS, specifically because I want to use the async await syntax and not use the synchronous actions with callbacks. So promises as FS from FS. And at the very bottom of our page, we're going to run await fs.write file. We're inside, we're going to specify where we want that file written. Where I'm going to say I want this to be in a new archives directory. And similar to what we did before with the screenshot path, I'm going to use the date to create the file name so that we know exactly the date that we're writing this in. But then for the file content, I'm going to json.stringify our archive. And this probably is optional, but I'm going to ask, also add null to so that it kind of pretty prints into that file so that anytime we want to look at the information uh, anytime again, it's going to be a little bit easily readable rather than just a minified string. Now, before I run this, I'm going to make sure I create this archives directory so that it actually exists. But now let's run that script again. And once it's complete, I'm going to head into my archives where we should now see that new JSON file, including that archive object. So now that we're actually being able to pull in that data, let's populate our page. To start, I ran that archive script a few times just so that we have a couple of data points to pull in, even though they're all going to be the same. But inside of my index.astro file, the first thing I want to do is import all those new files from the archives directory. Now, as I was alluding to before, we could technically pull in FS to grab that, but there's actually ways to grab that without being node specific. Now, the nice thing is we can just use astro.glob, which is a global inside of Astro, in order to easily pick up all those files. So I'm going to create a new constant of files, and I'm going to set that equal to await astro.glob. I'm going to pass in the path to that archives directory. And since we're in the source pages directory, we're going to have to go up to and we're going to look for archives slash we're going to use a star so that we can get any file of a type of JSON. And let's console log out these files so we can see what it looks like. So I'm going to spin up my local development server. 
And immediately we'll see that console log, including an array of all those files where we're able to see all those getters for the different properties, but we can just make it a little bit easier by using the default object, which is going to include all the data that we need. So I'm going to create a new constant of archives and I'm going to set that equal to files.map. And for each file, I'm going to ultimately return some data, but I want to grab that data. So I'm going to say constant data is equal to file.default and then ultimately return that data. I'm an avid console logger, so let's console log that out again just to make sure we're on the right track. And indeed, it looks like our archives array is full of those objects of exactly the data we need. So now let's actually loop through and put them on the page. So inside of my grid, I'm going to map through all my different archives. And for each of those archives, I'm going to return a list item where inside I first want to add my image, a source of archive.image.url. I'm going to have my width and my height. And then once I have those, I'm gonna also add my alt and we can say that this is our screenshot. And then it would be helpful if we have the date of when that was taken. So I'm going to add the archive.dates and just as an easy way to format it, format it in a nice way, I'm going to say new dates and I'm going to say to locale string or locale, locale, local, whatever you want to say. Now, if we pop into our application, we can see all of our screenshots along with the date for each and every one of those. And while the actual date itself is going to be the same for all of them, we can see a slight difference in the time for all of them, because of course we did just run the script a few times in the same day in order to produce those results. But now let's automate this where of course we don't want to have to run that script every single day where every single time our site changes in order to get these results. So we're going to use GitHub actions, which is an easy way to automate workflows just like this. So inside of my project, I'm going to create a new folder called .github, where inside I'm going to have a new folder called workflows. Now inside there, I want to create a new file called archive.yaml, or you can title that whatever you want to do. Where here, I need to give a set of instructions to GitHub on how I actually want this ran. Now, the first thing I want to do is give it a name, where I'm going to call this archive, but then I'm going to designate the on parameter, which is going to tell GitHub Actions when I want to run this. And I want to run this on a schedule. Now, whether you run crontab.guru to easily try to figure out when you want to set this up, or you can take it to a big brain move where we're just going to ask ChatGPT when we can create this schedule, where here it's telling us the exact schedule we need to run a cron every single day. So I'm going to just paste that in, which is going to be our new cron statement. And just to note that the server is typically on UTC time. So this is going to be midnight every day at UTC time, which I'm on the Eastern time. I think it's around eight o'clock or something along those lines at night. So it's not going to be your morning every morning, but we're going to actually add one more parameter and that's going to be workflow dispatch. And as we'll see later, once we get into the UI, this is going to be a way to manually kick off this action so that we can test it. But now finally, we're going to define our jobs and we're going to run a job of archive. Now there's a few required parameters. Like we need to define what kind of system or environment this runs on. So we're going to define the runs on parameter and we're going to use Ubuntu latest. And then we can define the steps that we want to take inside of that job. Now I'm just going to paste some of these in as I'm walking through them rather than typing them out. But first we want to use the actions checkout action in order to actually check out our GitHub repository. We then want to run the node setup script, and this can be with whatever version you want. I'm using 18 specifically right now, which gives me access to things like the top level await, which if you notice inside of our script, we're using the top level await here, where if you're running in an earlier node, you might not have the ability to do that. But then once we have node set up, we want to be able to install all of our dependencies. So I'm going to run npm CI, which is kind of like npm install, but it uses the lock file in order to install the dependencies so that you don't have minor differences between the environment that you have locked. And then finally, we can run our node script with node scripts slash archive.js, where if you remember inside of our script, we actually set up a few environment variables for our Cloudinary uploader. So we need to make sure we define those inside of the environment. So on this particular step, we're going to define an ENV key and I'm going to paste this in, but we're going to define every one of those different environment variables for every service that we need inside of this node script. Now, later, as we get into the GitHub UI, I'll show you where we can actually add the secrets to add those values. But for now, this is how we actually inject it into the script. Now, finally, we want to be able to take that result of the script and check it back into our repository. So we can use this publish to GitHub action script, which is going to do just that, 
we need to pass in our GitHub token, which this happens automatically. So we don't actually have to worry about setting this up inside of the UI like our Cloudinary secrets, but this is going to be able to allow us to easily check that code back into GitHub. And then finally, because it by default sets to master as the branch name, we need to make sure we configure that to whatever, whatever our main branch is, which most of the cases will probably be main. Now this should pretty much be able to run our script safely, but there's one thing that I intentionally skipped and that's how we deal with our playwright dependencies. Now we have it defined as a dev dependency, but having it as a dependency isn't enough in order to get the environment actually set up in order to use it. Microsoft actually had a playwright GitHub action, but what they actually recommend now is not using that action. And what they recommend doing is using the playwright CLI, where they have this command of running npx playwright install depths, and that's going to handle everything we need, including this example that they have here, where we're just going to simply run this command, including installing playwright along with the dependencies. So after we run npm CI, since we'll already have the other dependencies installed, we can run that npx playwright install with the dependencies. And just to quickly point out, not sure if you noticed, I kept accidentally deleting these values. We wanna make sure that we specify our node value and run npm CI. But now that we have all of our steps defined, I think we're ready to jump into GitHub UI. After you get all the code pushed up into GitHub, we have a few things we need to configure before we actually try to run the actions. So let's head over to the settings tab where first of all, let's go to actions and general, where we need to actually allow our GitHub action workflows to write those files into the file system. So we wanna make sure under workflow permissions that we add that read and write permissions. And as we can see that GitHub token will then have that access. So we'll click save. We'll also wanna make sure that we add those environment variables that we talked about before. So under secrets and variables, head over to actions. And here we can start adding a new repository secret for all those Cloudinary uh, variables, including the Cloudinary API key and the API secret and the cloud name. But once we have all these inside of our account and saved, we can then finally go over to the actions tab where we can now kick off our new archive by navigating it to it inside of the actions uh, section here. And then, like I mentioned before, since we have this workflow dispatch trigger, we can go ahead and manually kick that off by running that workflow. After a second or two, you'll see it pop up here and you can even navigate to it so you can see everything that's happening inside of that workflow, including all those steps that we set up. And once we land on job complete, if we now head back over to our code directory, well, it's gonna kind of be hard to uh, determine what's what since we just ran that script a bunch of times. We should be able to parse out these timestamps and see that these are all 19, so we have our 20, but we even see automated publish there, where if we look at the screenshot, this was just taken inside of our GitHub action workflow, where now if we try to run the application, it's going to pull that in. So let's test that out. Where I'm gonna run git pull, where, excuse me, I need to actually set up my upstream. I always forget to do that. So I'm gonna set it to main. I'm going to run git pull again. We can see that those files were pulled down. So let's spin up the dev server. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we now see that we have this timestamp of four o'clock, which from my time right now is about correct for when I actually ran that GitHub action. Now, the cool thing about using GitHub Actions as a mechanism for this, no matter if you're deploying to Vercel or Netlify or wherever you have set up with automated deployments from GitHub, this is going to trigger a new deploy. So it's always going to update that new landing page anytime that you have this automated push. Pulling all these tools together, including running Playwright with GitHub Actions, uploading it to Cloudinary, and then actually dumping that on a page with Astro gives us a lot of powerful features for being able to have simple use cases like this or pull it into more interesting use cases like data collection. Well, maybe because our site probably doesn't change daily, or maybe if you're a new site, it does, it might not make sense to run this daily, but maybe weekly or monthly. The nice thing is you can configure that cron to whatever timestamp you want. If you want to take those Cloudinary images a step further and take advantage of dynamic transformations, check out my video where we optimize and dynamically resize with Cloudinary. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.